All right, well, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today, back inside the studio, and what I am gonna do is do a still life. If you look behind me, you'll see that I've got some old boots, R.M. William boots, a nice Cobra hat, dry as a bone or oil skin coat, just a real rustic setup, set up on a nice old bench. Going to be on a big stretch canvas today, going to use canvas, could use linen, doesn't really matter, whatever. And of course, buckets of oil paint and the trusty old palette knives. Can't wait to get into it. Second major work in this studio, it's going to be fantastic. All right. Okay, now, even though I'm using the palette knives as the major stuff today, I'm also going to do a little bit of blocking in, just the initial drawing and draftsmanship with the brush, a little bit of turpentine, gum turpentine, some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. So that'll give me a nice neutral dark to work with. All right, let's have a look. What are we going to do today? I reckon this will come in roughly about here. Be there. Shoot this one down this way. And go there. Just feeling my way for now. Hat can go in here somewhere. Maybe slightly running off the edge. Okay, here's a boot. Just feel them in. Then the dry as a bone oil skin will come in this way somewhere. Like so. Nothing along those lines. Bit of a sleeve from the dry as a bone maybe hanging in here. Getting there with the general shapes. Well, that's kind of got the draftsmanship going, so we'll just keep on going with a bit of tonal painting now. Put some more burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, and gum turpentine. So I'll actually establish some of these darkest darks. The boots are going to be quite dark, being black leather boots. So what you try and do here is you're trying to work from light to dark, like tonal. You're thinking of shapes rather than all the details. So because we've got a white canvas here, I'm painting all the dark tones because we've already got the light tones. So I'm painting the dark edges, the shadows of the hat here. The car shadow of the hat down this way, like so. Onto the brim. And got a little middle, a lot of middle tones too, so I'm going to use a lot of turpentine just to let's actually get some of this, pour it on. Just trying to get a general vibe of it. Slightly different technique today, but uh, Still using the same process of working with the biggest differences and working tonal values, colour and light. That's kind of looking correct there. Got some nice dark tones in here. Actually dark right to the edge there. The boot itself is quite dark, even the lightest part of the boot is a dark value. That's giving me a basic feel. The 
hole lot back here. It's going to be quite dark. We might as well put that in now. A bit more blue with that. Burn sienna. Stick that in there. dark value there. Let's have a look, eh? Well, that's all going pretty well. So what I'll do now is I'll get some, I'm going to get stuck into the, the knife work now. I feel like I've blocked in enough, suggested enough, so mix up a bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to give a fairly low key but I'm going to add a bit of white to it to lighten that value a little bit. I'm trying to get the colour of those benches in, in the shadow, the sliding drawers themselves which are a low key blue. Let's see what we got. Now because I've got the turps underneath it's sliding on quite well. So, it's going on nicely. Just going to use the brush here to work down to the grooves because the the uh, easel itself is a little in the way. So, so I can get down to the bottom. It's easier to get in there with the brush. And do that. Get that in nicely. There we go. Ultramarine blue, blue sienna. there like that. I can go there. Something along those lines. A bit more dark up here. Sticking some of the darker values in. Alright, what do we got next? A little bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. A bit more burnt sienna than that, maybe a bit of white, add into the mix. A little bit of white with it. To lighten that value, but not too much. Keep it fairly dark. That'll be the timber part. That's just the timber section of a bit of furniture. Right. Maybe just a little bit more up here with the burnt sienna. Let's Dark valleys kicking around here. Yeah, right, let's have a look. All right, we've got that part done now. What I might do is get that background wall in here because that's a big block of white on here and quite a low key there. Even though it's a fairly light tone, it's still quite a low key compared to white. So we'll start getting that in, eh? Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, a little bit of the ultramarine blue to grey it off. And this is why I like to work as a knife because you can trowel it on, absolutely trowel the paint on and you know that I love to do that. It's a little bit darker and keyed down on the edges here to draw the eye away from that area. A little bit more blue and a bit more burnt sienna. Let me 
she goes. Lovely stuff. Look at that. Juicy oil paint. Fantastic stuff. All right. Down here we go. Yeah, the benefit of using a knife as opposed to the brush is you get a good coverage. You can see when I was terpsing in with the brush, I was getting a lot of thin paint on, but to get the actual bulk, it works quite well. With a knife, you can really put a lot of paint on. All right, we'll just go a little bit darker. So a bit more burnt sienna, a bit more blue. A little bit darker here in the shadows, make them a little bit more mysterious. Up to the edge is lovely. Yep, something like that. Up to the top we'll get that, get rid of those white bits right on the edges here. Fill that in nicely. There she goes, look at that. Look at that. All right, a bit more white. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and yellow ochre. That's the three that I've been using to get this general background wall color. It's a little bit cooler, it just needs a bit more yellow ochre. That's going on nicely now. Maybe a bit more burnt sienna, it's a twang to green. The burnt sienna with the blue won't go quite as green as the yellow ochre and the blue. I can go up under there. It's going on beautifully. Fantastic. Right, what have we got? A little bit in the shadow here, but it's a bit darker, so a bit more burnt sienna. Blue and yellow with less white. A darker value here. Far down am I going here? All right, let me just have a look what I've got. Finish up this bit here. What are we doing here? That can go like so. That can be there. All right. Okay. Change tack a little. We'll go to that oil skin coat. Darker value. Ultramarine blues and burnt siennas. with a bit of yellow ochre thrown in for good measure. So predominantly at the moment, it's ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna is capturing most of the block in. There we go, that goes up in there. So. A little bit lighter in value there. Where's the sleeve going to come up to about here? Just keep on getting it in there. A bit more yellow can burn sienna.
All right, just keep working around, never quite finishing anything, just getting in and doing stuff. Now I'm going to get the edge, the edge of this lovely piece of furniture and stick it on with bits of blue, so the blue paint, but also bits of timber colours showing through because it's a combination of the two. There's a timber colour, very obvious, but there's also blue paint on the timber, which is kind of rubbing off now because of its age and its rusticness, but it's still there. So we'll put that in. Then I'll get a bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre, a bit of white, much more high key colour. So you've got yellow ochre, burnt sienna and white for getting this lovely rich bench top. May need a twang of some sort of red. I haven't been using any reds yet, but I may need to. Let's put that in first, see what we've got. Like that. Like that. A little bit lighter, a little bit more white maybe. Back here we need quite a light value on the bench top. Alright, well that went pretty well. Let's get, do the same sort of effect for the old hat because that lovely Akubra hat is still very, most obviously, the biggest difference between being a finished painting and being what it is at the moment. That white is really standing out. So let's just get some of this on, work out where it's going to go, down here maybe. We won't go mad about getting every shape exact at the moment, we're just trying to feel it in and get the basic vibe of it. That'll be there. A bit lighter value. The top of the hat here. Hang on, let's give a look at that. Where does that hat come up to? The top of the hat's there. Dark. I'm just going to get a bit more burnt sienna. More burnt sienna. And away we go. Burnt sienna. What am I doing here? Dark first. I want to get another dark established. Around the, the inside. Well, this section of the hat. Let's just have a look. That'll be there. About there, yep. Yeah. Alright, now back into the light source, yellow over and burnt sienna. And what happens down low? It goes darker value down here. Because we're working with the tonal values, the shadows, rather than just all the draftsmanship. So this bottom part of the hat here is more in shadow. Starts to roll into shadow there as it falls away. A little bit cool, so I'll add a little bit more blue. It's quite a warm part of it there. A bit cooler here. Okay, so a light value again here. Where are we? Light value there. And here. So the top of that part of the hat there is quite light. Going into darks there. Something like that. A bit cooler down here, maybe. There's shadowy stuff down here. There we go. A bit more white. Establish that white value again. We've got wall colour. What have we got the wall colour? Yep. Pick out those edges of those boots a bit more. It's probably going to come into there. Right. Because I'm thinking the edge of that boot's a bit shorter. We'll take that off to there. That one's there. 
ultramarine blue and black again. Establish that shadow. Getting there, getting there. Just got to keep moving around, going for the biggest differences. So we'll go for the darks right in this shadow here. Fill that in. Okay. Something like that. Mid-tones. Stick some mid-tones in. Swap this goes up here. All right, let's have a look. Because we're painting reality indoors, all the values are quite sunken at this stage. Quite mid-tone and low-key, but what will happen once I start getting those white highlights and whatever going, they'll really start to pop then. Hang on, let's just put a bit of this in. A bit more of the edge of the coat this way. Yeah, that'll start to pop. I might just suggest it now. Get a little bit of white. What do we got? A little bit of white on the edge of the boot just here. Some going through there. This one has a piece here. We didn't mean to put that on, there we go. It's quite a dark value. Yep, yep. A couple more of the whites, there's a bit of a white highlight kick in there. Some flicking up in there. mid tone that part off. Very sloppy and broad and underpainted and understated at the moment, but it'll get there. Just want to put that in there. We establish that dark. Let's have a look at this edge here of this hat. I'm saving the big crescendo for hang on, for the boots themselves, the major accents and whatever. Of course, will be with the boots, so everything else will be secondary subjects. So they can be slightly keyed off and soft anyway. But we'll just keep working around until we get. Something that we're satisfied with. Out there. Yeah, somewhere along those lines, coming in that way a bit maybe. Bit of white with that. Yeah, that shadow is pretty broad like that. We'll keep that there. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, white. Stay with that through there. The light value in there. Quite a light value through there. In the crown of the hat. And then it starts to Darken through here as she goes around. A bit of cool blue coming from outside's reflections, outside's sh pale shadows. Getting there, getting there. So we we'll just keep moving around like so, restating. When we find that everything's kind of where we want it, then we really start to reel it in. But at the same time, some parts will be more reeled in than others. Some parts will be left purposely underdone so it keeps, doesn't draw your eyes to it too much if it's not the main subject. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Lighten that key there. I need a 
bit more burns here and there. I'll do that in a minute. Let's just have a look. All right, burnt sienna. Reaching this up a bit. Just stand back and see how it's going, eh? Let's get some more bench top, just keep moving around, restating things, getting them in the right spot. I feel like that goes out that way a little bit further, maybe. Somewhere like that. Blend a bit of that into there. Comes down. A little bit of softening. Just keep working around, building up, building up, till we've got it acceptable enough. Very simple colour palette we're using here today because they're all different shades of autumn tones basically with a little bit of that cool blue in there to help it pop the complementary colour. Just start to build some of this up now. That will go through like that. And drop off the edge here, a little bit of light tone. That will drop off the back edge that way. A little bit of that there. Yellow ochre, white burnt sienna. Light value. Put the sleeve to the coat in. Little broken colours here and there. Getting there, getting there, beauty. Stick a bit more of shadow in there as well in the minute, we just. Let's keep going for a sec. Here we go. That one can go that way. All right. Well, it's definitely getting there. We'll just uh, get a bit more burnt sienna out. It's really got the big impression already. We've got the shapes and forms and whatever else. And now we just keep on really getting into refining. Okay, we'll go for a few more of these darks, which again is just the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue. A little bit of a shadow on the underside here. Stick this in. Right. Same deal on this one. Shadow through on the underside there. Bit of a shadow ticking on the outside bit of that. Yep, got a bit of a weird shape there, but we'll get that going fixed in a minute. That's going all right. Just here, the edge of the elastic. The elastic boot, you can see that it's coming out of the shadow there. What have we got? Somewhere along there. Some of these darkest darks again with the combination of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, no white. Let's mix it a little more consistently so it's darker.
just restating, not overstating because it's a secondary subject, it's not the main subject, so you just do enough to make it convincing and good but not overdone. You leave the main stuff for the main crescendo and the less you do everywhere else, the more the main crescendo will show up. And stuff on this one. Just throw a bit of rust in. A bit of blue. And, I mean, a bit of burnt sienery brown dominant to give it more of a rust colour. A bit of white paint and stuff on this one. The light's just catching down here on the bottom lip of it, so we'll just put that there. Hang on here. It's just catching. Working for life's great. I love working from life. You can see all these subtle things that photos just don't seem to play up on the right stuff. The important things, the tonal values, light to dark, whatever shows up the most obvious. Photos don't seem to have, it's more obvious when you've got it right there. All right, well, I've had a little break and I've moved the camera, so, well, sorry, not moved the camera, I've moved the painting itself into a different location in the studio just so I can see it in a different angle and different light. So, pretty happy with what's going on, but I want to refine it that little bit more, so what I want to do is, it's nice and broad all over, but it's very realistic because it's got the right tonal values and form. Now, in some of these real focal points on the boots because that's going to be the main subject. I really want to make it like the portrait of the boots. Going to pick out some really fine stuff like a bit of stitching in the leather and whatever else, like really bring up the character of the leather. Maybe bring up the character of the timber a little bit more too, just, just enough to suggest and then bang, we're into it. All right, let's go. I'll just get a little bit of cad orange with the yellow ochres. I haven't used any cadmium colours so far, it's all been ochres and autumn tones, but now I just want a little bit more highlight. Maybe a little bit of yellow. Just a little bit more accent on this bench top in a few areas. Let's bring it up that little bit. Still plenty of yellow ochre with it, so it's not staring at it and saying it's a completely different picture. Just to pop it a little. Pick this out just here somewhere. Let's clean that up. Hang on, she's sticking a little. A bit more white in the mix with that. Just got to get the right colour and value. It's a little bit keyed off back there. All right, well, I reckon I might leave it at that. I reckon I've got the big impression pretty happy with what's going on. I feel like I've really captured the character of the leather and the quality of those boots. Quite refined really and uh, that's another thing. The whole painting is fairly subdued in colour and tone in all those autumn tones I guess you could say and then I've reserved some high key cad colours and some really refined details for the boots itself just to make it sting and pop. Pretty happy with the way there's a Kubra hat, the fur felt hat's come up. Fairly soft, fairly keyed down, but like I was saying, we want to play, we want it to be a subject, but we don't want it to compete for the main event. So this is a great lead in to the main subject, the boots themselves, the character of the boots. Really trying to bring out the leather character, 
really trying to bring out the fur felt character here. And as far as the timber bench, trying to bring out that. So I'm not just going for the light and colour and form, I'm trying to bring out the rustic quality of the subject itself, whether it be leather, fur felt, canvas in the dryers of bone, the oil skin for example, or the timber, some bits of old metal drawers, the whole thing. Now as far as this wall, it was a little bit empty for my liking, so there is actually a crack on the wall that's been repaired. And what I decided to do is maybe just bring that up as a secondary subject. So there's some interest up there, but it's not competing for the rest of the rest of the viewing. All right. I've gone to the trouble here also with putting some little dots, some little stitching around the leather here just to really pull it in. So on the whole, it's nice and broad and tonal, but just in the focal area, it's almost like the portrait of the boots right in the focal area. He really reeled it in to give that feeling of reality. All right, pretty happy with what's going on. Let's get that camera off, come buzzing right in and see what you guys reckon. All right, thank you.